Good morning everyone and um, welcome again to our prayer time together at St Andrew's or Horton Lusgern at home we would say at the moment. As we continue in this time of lockdown we bring you our prayers and readings for you to share in. As we see nations move into different phases we see hear and feel the effects of that in different ways. Let's share together what's in our heart and minds. We welcome you to join in as you please. So in preparation, O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in this gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I want to share with you a prayer um, by Wilfred Peterson. Um, it might seem a little bit strange and it certainly would probably have been useful bef but the, before lockdown or the beginning of lockdown. So, but I still feel as though it rings very, very true for us now. Slow me down, Lord. Ease the pounding of my heart by the quieting of my mind. Steady my hurried pace with a vision of the eternal reach of time. Give me, amid the confusion of the day, the calmness of the everlasting hills. Break the tensions of my nerves and muscles with the soothing music of the singing streams that live in my memory. Teach me the art of taking minute vacations, of slowing down to look at a flower, to chat with a friend, to pat a dog or cat, to smile at a child. Lord, and inspire me to send my roots deep into the soil of life's enduring values that I may grow towards my greater destiny. Remind me each day that the race is not always to the swift. There is more to life than increasing its speed. Let me look upward to the towering oak and know that it grew great and strong because it grew slowly and well. Amen. I'm going to read for you now, um, well with you I should say, um, Psalm 67. It's um, a song um, to the music director um, and it's not written in the first person, it's a community prayer. So Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity. Guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God. Our God blesses us. May God bless us still, so, to, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Let's say together, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So the psalm, it was a psalm for revival, a psalm for the whole earth, 
a psalm for all nations. All people were asked within it to praise God. All nations asked within it to be glad and sing for joy. And to rule and guide, Jesus will guide the nations. A repeated request for the people's praise. And the ends of the earth, well, obviously for global worship, for each and every one of us. So just um, moving to um, just a, a, sh a small amount of prayer. Um, our intercessional prayer, really. So let's pray. We pray for the nations, Lord, that they would see your way and praise you. We pray for leaders, Lord, that they would lead with kindness and in love in honesty and truth. We pray for the whole earth, for each and every one of us, to care for every living thing in our way, our own way. We pray for ourselves, each and every one of us, different in our circumstances, in our way of life and living that our lives be improved by those around us and ourself improving what we can with you in our heart, mind and body. Amen. So I'll move to our reading, um, our Acts reading. So we're starting um, in chapter 12, starting at verse 24. And then moving right through into Acts 13 and finishing at verse 5. So our Acts reading starting um, at verse 24 of chapter 12. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manain, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they would fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off moved on to Cyrus, Cyprus. Sorry. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salome, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. This is the word of the Lord. And move directly on now through to our John reading. So John chapter 12 verses um, 44 right through to the end of that chapter. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I've come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. If anyone hears my words, but does not keep them. I do not judge that person. For I do not come to judge the world, but to save the world. 
there's a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I've spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I've spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life, so whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. This is the word of the Lord. I'm not going to talk as such um, about that particular reading, um, but um, as prompted by um, a book that I've been reading, I've been reading it for ages, <laughs> um, and um, it's it's the, called The Father's Heart. Um, it's written by Jeff Lucas. Um, he's a, a Christian speaker. Um, he's a writer and a broadcaster. And so within the book, um, he wrote, um, it's not that I'm some kind of heavy doubter. It was just that there were times when it seemed that God was speaking, um, but then other times when I wasn't so sure. So I'm asking you, do you feel like that? Even though you hear testimonies, and this is what Jeff was saying, he would hear many, many testimonies. When it came down to it, hearing God, was he so sure that it was God? Again, that thing of, um, is it God or is it yourself? Or is it your own thoughts? Do you have recurring thoughts? And is there a sense of it? A sense of excitement about them. At that time Jeff was speaking on the power of the Holy Spirit and he thought um, will the congregation that he was speaking to who were actually uh, about 700 young people would they actually listen um, and, would, and would God turn up <coughs> um, and at the end of the talk, um, will it fill the people with his power? And Jeff, um, within the session, he used his four-year-old son. He used his four-year-old son, Richard, with him on stage. Um, he wanted to show the father and son relationship um, as an illustration. Um, an illustration of God's heart for his children. God comes to embrace us. Um, he'd been told by God that he was going to be taught a lesson that evening. And it would be a lesson that he would never forget. It got to the point where he held his son and he said, ah, this is time for school. His son leaned back while in his arms. And he opened his arms wide. For a moment, <clears throat> he thought, um, would his son playfully ruin the demonstration by drawing back and punching him maybe playfully? But no, instead, he wrapped himself tightly around his neck buried himself in his face, into his shoulders, like he would never want to let go. Excuse me. Um, 
this is a simple parable a parable that Jeff wanted to portray of, of the father and the son and suddenly um, school began the Holy Spirit fell on the crowd the raw power of God That evening people needed God as Father. God the universe wants to follow. God the universe wants to father us. And if we wake up to that, then there'll be a revelation in our lives. A concrete sense of safety that will cause us to be at home with the supernatural, a rising surge of gratitude that will motivate a um, creative service, a growing call for intimacy that will deliver us from cold religion. People saw a little boy hugging his father, his dad, but also understood in that moment something of God's heart for them. Jesus came and talked constantly, continuously about his father. He came to paint a portrait of Father God. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. And again, you may want to take time as we move through the Lord's Prayer um, to pray your prayer, to open your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll just take a little a few moments of silence um, while you'd like to maybe update your prayers, um, your prayers for the time that we're in at the moment. So just, um, just wait for a, a few moments and I'll give you a little bit of silence for you to add your own prayer. Uh, 
as usual, Lord, we just pray. Um, pray for the things that are, are, are on our minds and our hearts. Again, we think of all those that are, are working, you know, every day. They're, they're working, um, they have no choice. Well, they have a choice, they could they could not turn, maybe would not turn up, but that's not what they choose to do. They actually do um, choose to go to work, to serve the rest of us, um, the rest of the, the nation, um, to keep things moving, Lord, to feed us, to keep us healthy, to bring kindness, to bring friendship. We pray again for those that aren't allowed to go out of the door. Maybe you're allowed to go into the garden, but they're shielded or cocooned. Cocoon sounds much, much more sensitive than even more than shielded, Lord. Some people, they do think it's a restriction that we would like to get out and, and move about. And we know that these changes are coming, Lord. But again, we don't know the timing on this. So we pray for everyone. Whatever their condition, Lord. Pray for those people who are in hospital. We pray for those um, who have been in hospital and have come out and then had to go back in again. There are several of those in my friendship group at the moment. So Lord, we just pray that um, they'll all survive this and um, and come back, um, be fitter than, than they were before, Lord, and that you'll keep them all safe. So in conclusion, we say together, May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And we look forward to seeing you again this evening. So um, we have another prayer session today. Um, uh, that's at seven o'clock this evening. So looking forward um, to seeing you here um, with an, another member of the prayer team. So we'll see you later. Take care. Good night. Goodbye.